This YouTube channel has recently reached a milestone, but this channel has never been about me. It's always been about helping you reach your goals and it is my way of giving back to the community that has given me everything. Therefore, this video is dedicated to answering your questions. If you watch this video, there is a 99.9% .9 chance that your question will be answered. Let's get into it. So this question is asking how difficult it is to get a remote cybersecurity job from another country. One of the attractive things about working in cybersecurity is that there is a possibility for remote work or even hybrid work where you do few days in the office and few days remotely. Now, if you're trying to land your first cyber security job and your goal is to do a remote job from your country into a different country, can it happen in your very first job? Yes. Is it easy? Absolutely not, especially if it's your first cyber security job. Your best bet would be to get as much experience and certifications working in your country in cyber security, but then try to get a job in a multinational company that has offices all over the world. For example, you might get a job in Microsoft in Dominican Republic and then you can transfer to the US or you can possibly do some remote work for some of the clients in the US. I've seen this work more often than trying to have your very first cyber security job as a remote job, which is usually a little bit challenging. The next one is a really important question. So it says I've passed the Google cyber security certificate and I've done it again. Unfortunately, I feel overwhelmed and I feel like I know nothing or forget everything. Is this normal? This is absolutely normal. The Google Cyber Security Certificate is the first certificate that you do as you're trying to land your first cyber security job. This is a completely new field for you. So it's perfectly normal and expected for you to feel overwhelmed, to feel like you forget things and to feel like some things don't make sense. But the only way to retain the information that you've learned and to build on top of that information is by doing practical hands-on projects and practical hands-on intermediate level certifications. This is the only way to gain confidence and to retain the information that you've learned. So please follow the roadmaps that I put out because they will get you to your goals in the fastest and cheapest way possible. The next question from Cindy, she says for someone coming from a non-IT background, even after going through some cybersecurity training courses like Try Hack Me, I still feel a lack of confidence because I've never seen a company's IT network before. How shall I go on about building that foundation? This is a perfectly valid question and this is precisely why I recommend hands-on projects and lab-based certifications. So if you followed my cyber analyst roadmap for example you will be doing hands-on practical training this training will mimic a real world environment so yes you're absolutely right you haven't seen a real world network but those labs actually simulate what a real network look like so if you're spending your time doing lab-based certifications then you are getting that foundational experience that you need you absolutely don't need to go get a job as a network engineer to see what a real network looks like but you must do practical projects and hands-on training that mimics a real world environment the next question is asking as a network engineer engineer. I'm unable to make out where I should start my cybersecurity career. I've got hands-on knowledge in Cisco and Juniper firewalls. What will be my next step? So this is a fairly common question that I get. I'll get questions from someone who tells me I have 10 years of experience as a programmer. What should I do to get into cybersecurity? Or as in this particular example, the individual is telling me he has experience as a network engineer. What should his next step be? So your next step, no matter what your background is, is to follow the roadmaps that I put out as they are. Whilst yes, your experience as a network engineer, or a programmer or a help desk, they will help, they will come in handy, but the same rules still apply to you. You need to learn cybersecurity from the very beginning, you need to do all the certifications that I recommend, and you need to do the hands-on projects. Pick one of the roadmaps that I provided and follow it to the end and you will get to your goal. But before we continue, I want to thank Skillshare who are kindly sponsoring this video. You've probably heard of Skillshare by now, but they are a fantastic platform that has classes on a wide variety of topics, including illustration, graphic design, photography, photography, UI, UX design, creative writing, animation, fine art, music, video editing, marketing, productivity, social media, and so much more. Whether you want to learn the basics of watercolor painting or learn how to start your own creative business, Skillshare has classes that will take you from beginner to pro alongside a very supportive community. My favorite classes are the creative career focused classes. So if you're looking for ways to start a creative side hustle, such as a YouTube channel, for example, then Skillshare has classes in freelancing, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, marketing, social media, and even video editing. In fact, this is how I learned how to edit my own videos. There are even a wide variety of classes that will teach you how to leverage AI, both in business and in your own personal creative journey. But if you're one of the first 500 people to hit the link in my description box below, you will get the first month for free. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. And back to the video. The next question is about GRC. Can a physical security professional start preparation for GRC or should he first become a cybersecurity 
Strategy Analyst, then he can change to GRC. Unfortunately, there is no beginner friendly training for GRC that I'm personally happy with. But to answer your question, you absolutely don't need to work as a SABA analyst before you start with GRC. You can start with GRC as an entry level professional. But as of the time of making this video, there is no training that will take you from zero to being a cyber security GRC professional yet. I am personally working on something extremely excited that will fix this problem for you. So please keep an eye on this YouTube channel, but also sign up to my free weekly cybersecurity newsletter at unixguy.com because there will be a very cool announcement coming soon about GRC. The next question is about cybersecurity specializations. I finished my Google cybersecurity cert. Along that, I did the Google IT support, but I'm confused what to specialize in. I have interest in both offensive and defensive. Which specialization is best for you? Should you go on the defensive side? or the offensive side so the answer is there is no best specific specialization what I want you to do if you're trying to land your first cyber security job and you finished your Google cyber security certification then just pick one pathway and stick with it for at least six to eight months finish all the certifications that I recommend learn as much as you can and then down the line you can change specialization and the knowledge that you've gained in that particular roadmap will be extremely useful and transferable to the other specialization that you want to specialize in but as someone who's trying to land their first cyber security job I wouldn't stress too much about which specialization to choose because chances are you will change your mind later down the line but also all the knowledge that you will gain are extremely transferable to any other specialization so I wouldn't worry too much about that the next question is about imposter syndrome and doubting yourself I'm currently feeling a little discouraged on my journey of becoming an ethical hacker do you or other cyber security professionals doubt yourself and if so how did you overcome it so this is an important question especially as you you're still early on in your journey towards a career in cybersecurity, yes, it's absolutely normal to doubt yourself because you're still brand new to this field. So you are expected to feel like you don't know much of anything. You're still at the very beginning of your journey, but I want you to acknowledge that you're taking active steps towards your goal. I want you to shift your focus from the stuff that you don't know to taking daily action towards reaching your goal. Now, as far as cybersecurity is concerned, no one knows everything. Chances are after 10 years or even 20 years you'll end up specializing in one area and you won't have knowledge in every other area in cybersecurity. So the individual who works as a senior penetration tester will probably not have sufficient knowledge in something like digital forensics and the application security engineer probably doesn't have enough understanding of GRC so no one knows everything but your focus should always be on your daily action on the labs that you're doing and on the current certification that you're doing. It's easy to get distracted by thinking too much of the big picture but the truth is your focus should be on on what's within your control which is the current certification that you are preparing for the next question is about identity and access management so brandy is asking would i be able to create a roadmap for identity and access management now for those of you who don't know but identity and access management is an extremely large and diverse field within cyber security but unfortunately there are no structured training courses that can teach you how to become an identity and access professional for a number of reasons but the first one is that there are so many different tools that fall under the umbrella of identity and access management that unfortunately don't offer any affordable training to get you started which makes identity and access management one of those specializations that are not easily accessible especially for people who are trying to land their first cyber security job but having said all of that your best bet would be to follow my cloud security engineer roadmap because within the certifications that I recommended in that roadmap there are many modules that are relevant to identity and access management so you will learn valuable information about user management about passwords and about Active Directory. So I strongly recommend that you follow that roadmap because you will not only learn about identity and access management, but you'll also learn how to be a cloud security engineer, which will open a lot more doors for you, especially as you're trying to land your first cyber security job. Because this way, if you can't find a dedicated identity and access management role, you might be able to find a cloud engineering role where you can perform some of the identity and access management tasks. The next question is about different training courses. They are doing a course on Udemy since some courses for ethical hacking is that a good route and what about a cyber security course by Nathan House I honestly get a lot of these questions repeatedly I'll put a roadmap out in a video with certain courses recommendations but I will almost always get a comment from someone who tells me but what about this course but what about this other course to be honest the answer is I don't know I don't know who Nathan House is I have no idea what particular course are you doing within Udemy but what I do know is that I put a lot of time and effort in creating those roadmaps and I personally go and do all the training 
training courses that I recommend for you. So they are vetted, they are high quality. I don't see a reason why you should ignore those courses and do these other courses that you've selected because the courses that I've curated for you, I put them in a certain sequence to get you to your goal in the cheapest and fastest way possible. So Javier is saying, do you have any advice for someone who's approaching 50 years old and about to complete a cybersecurity degree? I realize that ageism exists in all fields. I do get this question often is, am I too old for cybersecurity? I'm going to be completely honest with you. Career change at any age is challenging. No matter how old you are, you still need to go through the process of learning, of acquiring new skills. And the reality is when we do the learning and studying, it usually happens after our work or on weekends or on our downtime. And there are certain challenges that come with changing career. So even if you were 18 years old or 20 years old, you still need to go through the exact same process. Now, do people discriminate against you because of your age? Unfortunately, in the real world, there are individuals who will discriminate against you because of your age, because of your gender, because of your ethnicity, because of your religion, or even because of your political views. And whilst this is illegal to do, unfortunately, it does happen. Now, is it prominent? The answer is no. In fact, in cybersecurity, people value maturity and life experience. I personally have seen so many individuals who moved from law enforcement or nursing or emergency services or even physical security into cybersecurity. And I noticed that their maturity has been an absolute asset. But what I want you to do is to be extremely clear into why you want to change career because you will get rejected from jobs and you will have no idea why you got rejected. So you need to have a strong conviction in your own skills and in your own journey. But whether you're 50 years old, 60 years old, or even 18 years old, you can absolutely do it. And I've seen so many people do it in my career, but even some of my audience members on YouTube. The next question is about the difference between cybersecurity expectations between Europe and the US. Can you compare cybersecurity job expectations differences in Europe versus the USA? This question is kind of impossible to answer because both the US and Europe are extremely large with so many differences and varieties that it's impossible to pinpoint the differences. But broadly speaking, if we're talking about Europe, there seem to be stronger sense of regulations. So the GDPR, if you're familiar with it, is a little bit more strict than some of the privacy laws in the US. So that can be one of the differences. But unfortunately, there is no similarities between the working condition in Germany versus Italy versus Poland or the UK. And likewise, in the US, there is virtually nothing in common between working in cybersecurity in New York versus Alaska or somewhere in the Midwest. There are just so many differences. But if there is one thing that I can broadly speak to is that there seem to be a lot more work-life balance in Europe compared to the US. Unfortunately, I'm not entirely certain because again, this will depend on the size of the organization, on the management style of the organization. So I wouldn't trust broad generalizations about cybersecurity differences between the US and Europe. The next question is about cyber threat intelligence. Any updated advice on getting a job in cyber threat intelligence? I've done the steps that you mentioned before, as well as two cyber internships. Would still like to add more to improve my CV. So for those of you who are not aware, cyber threat intelligence can be its own specialization or it can be a task that's performed as part of a security operation center. The purpose of cyber threat intelligence is to get intelligence or information about recent threats, perhaps recent malware, so that the organization can be proactive in protecting against those new threats before they even reach the organization. So first of all, I wouldn't try to restrict myself to cyber threat intelligence because it can just be a skill or a task that you perform as a cyber security analyst, especially if we're thinking of small to medium sized organizations. But in some of the large organizations, they will have individuals who specialize in cyber threat intelligence. If you want to improve your chances of landing a cyber threat intelligence role, I would say do more of intermediate level cyber analyst training because they all have modules that discuss cyber threat intelligence. Now I talked about some of the realities of working in cyber security that no one seems to want to talk about in this video and I'll see you there.